and hence we shall write that it is self-evident that not all hydrogen is created equal. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So don't forget to click on the notification bell so you get all my latest videos. So I'm pretty sure that you have heard about the hydrogen economy, about hydrogen technologies, on how hydrogen is getting each time more relevant in our society, not only because it's a precious fuel, it is a fuel that when burnt produces only water vapor and well, we always know that we want to decrease the carbon dioxide and all fossil fuel derived emissions. So that's why hydrogen has been getting more popular with time. But not only that, there's a lot of industries that are using hydrogen to offset their carbon footprint. And that's why there's a lot of companies and industries investing a lot in this technology. And what I want to do in this specific video is to show you where does the hydrogen comes from. More specifically, what are the sources of energies? I'm pretty sure that you have heard the concept of green process, green technology, green fuel, green economy, and most likely also green hydrogen. And we love this concept, right? Green is always great, whatever that means. But the main idea here is that it is typically towards taking care of the environment, meaning that our processes, our technologies, our products are way much more friendly, or let's say we are not focused on destroying the planet, but rather we are focusing towards the long sustainable process or the long sustainable product production. But will you believe me that there is pink hydrogen, there's yellow hydrogen, there's gray hydrogen, black hydrogen, purple hydrogen, turquoise hydrogen, there's a lot of colors. And as you can imagine, it's not so straightforward to guess where does the hydrogen is coming from. So I did my research because it was kind of confusing that sometimes some colors were specifying certain type of sources, some other color codes were specifying other type of process technologies, some other sources were stating, uh, I don't know, it was kind of confusing. So I tried to get all the color codes into a single, let's say, or most common use. So because of this, you may encounter that maybe the way you use, I don't know, green hydrogen or let's say black hydrogen may not be a 100% exact fit for you or for your industry. So bear with me. This is what I found to be the most popular or the most common uses of the hydrogen color codes. And for this, I will be preparing you a list, guys. You know, I love lists. It's way easier to find and identify the points. I will be separating the list into non-human-made hydrogen, which, of course, as you can imagine, is kind of hard to get. The second part will be human-made hydrogen. So the only hydrogen non-man-made will be a white hydrogen. This concept is essentially all the hydrogen that you can find already in nature. Let it be in the air, of course. We know that there is a certain percentage of hydrogen in the atmosphere. We also know that the water can, especially ocean water or lake water, river water, you can find hydrogen, which is dissolved, of course, pretty uh, hard to get from, but technically speaking, there's hydrogen. You can also find in caverns or caves, which may have been trapped. You can also find them in sediments. There's a lot of ways in which hydrogen can be trapped. And I say trapped because this is exactly what happens. Uh, hydrogen is a very volatile, let's say, very light, not so dense material, which eventually will go up and escape the atmosphere. And as you can imagine, that's why it's pretty hard to find hydrogen in nature or pretty straightforward hydrogen. And as I stated before, guys, I told you that there are other type of categories. There are certain categories that you will encounter that if the hydrogen is a byproduct, let it be if you're producing a product, let it be A. Then you have a byproduct, which is B, let it be hydrogen. This can be considered white hydrogen in the sense that it was produced without the intent of production. But I really like the way white hydrogen sounds like non-man-made. So only natural hydrogen. I think it's the best way to categorize hydrogen. Natural hydrogen, nothing to do with human production. Okay, now let's get to the man-made hydrogen. As you can imagine, this is done via industrial processes mostly. Not so gathering hydrogen from atmosphere or so, but rather from other chemical reactions that produce a lot of hydrogen. I separated this into two main sources. The main source is fossil fuel, which is 
unfortunately 95% of our current feedstock so all the hydrogen that is man-made nowadays is 95 coming from fossil fuels either coal oil or natural gases the other 5% will be the non-fossil fuels or let it be the renewable sources or the green sources or so on which is of course a dynamic place not coming from a fossil fuel not from crude oil not from natural gas not from coals and so on so I was wondering whether I should start with black hydrogen or whether I should go with gray hydrogen. The main idea was whether I should go from the very darkest to the lightest or should I just go into the most common one to the least common one. And that's why I decided to start with gray hydrogen. It's the most common one, although it might not be the most polluting, it's very polluting still. It's still based into CO2. It is produced from steam reforming, which is a process that you can find everywhere. Actually, if you are not familiar with it, go and check out other type of processes. Or if you want me to explain or make a video, more casual video, not so techy, but more into chemical engineering and learning a little bit more, let me know in the comments. I will be preparing a video for you guys in the future. Now let's go back to gray hydrogen. It is produced from methane or mostly natural gas. The methane reacts with water, produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. This combination of gases is typically called syngas. It can also have carbon dioxide or so, but mostly carbon monoxide and hydrogen is the famous syngas. So you may be familiar with that type of gas. If you are not, also ensure to know what it is. As you can imagine, this process is very common, it's relatively cheap, it is very technical feasible, it's not quite hard to do it. It's pretty straightforward, you just have natural gas, mix it with water, high temperatures, you separate hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and you have your hydrogen. Then you separate hydrogen from carbon monoxide and you produce your gray hydrogen. The second fossil fuel derived hydrogen will be black hydrogen, although you can also use brown hydrogen. I saw that there is a difference sometimes, sometimes black hydrogen encloses brown hydrogen, so I will try to separate them. I really think that black hydrogen needs to be associated towards a much more pollutant source, and brown hydrogen is still like showing you that it's not quite clean, but there's other sources which are way better. Black hydrogen comes from the gasification of bituminous coal. So it's one of the oldest processes in which we used to get hydrogen. Back in the days, 100s, 1900s, you will get a lot of hydrogen via this process. So you have solid coal, you add your hydrogen source, typically vapor or air, and what you will have is essentially a gasification of the coal itself, producing syngas, which, as stated before, is a very common gas of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. Then you will separate both gases and you will get your black hydrogen source. Now, regarding brown hydrogen, you will typically use lignite as a coal of choice. So you use bituminous coal, that will be black hydrogen. So if you use lignite coal, that will be brown hydrogen. The process is mostly the same. Of course, you need to change certain temperature conditions, but since it's coal gasification, what we're talking about, the process is pretty straightforward. It's just adding coal, adding water vapor, air, and gasifying it into the formation of syngas. Blue hydrogen, which is kind of funny in the sense that you can do whatever you want as long as you hide the body. So what I mean with hide the body, as long as you take the carbon dioxide, either you sequester it or you take it, you hide it, you store it, whatever way you do it, but what you cannot do is let that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the main idea of blue hydrogen is that although you may use all technologies or let's say standard technologies, as long as you're adding that last step of making neutral your carbon footprint, that will make any black hydrogen, gray hydrogen, brown hydrogen into blue hydrogen. Before we continue to the non-fossil fuel part, we need to address the turquoise hydrogen. It's a kind of hybrid in the sense that we are using fossil fuels such as natural gas, but it's also kind of in between that the energy or let's say the fuel source is not directly a fossil fuel. So we couldn't say that it fits exactly 100% the fossil fuel requirement for energy, but since we are still using natural gas, fossil fuel, uh, we cannot say exactly that this is non-fossil fuel or related or so. So that's why I'm putting the turquoise hydrogen in between. Now, what's exactly turquoise hydrogen? It's 
essentially the process of having natural gas separated into carbon and hydrogen. And with any processes that implies the separation of bonds or atoms, this requires a lot of thermal energy. And the energy in this process typically will not come from a fossil fuel source. Hence, it's not quite fossil fuel derived, but still we're using natural gas for this. So yeah, you understand why it's kind of in between the two lists. Okay, so those were the fossil fuel hydrogen sources. Now let's go to the non-fossil fuel hydrogen sources, which as you can imagine are the trendy things right here. How do we create hydrogen from other bio sources, fuels or so? It's always great to see a lot of technologies. And as a young engineer, I'm looking forward on what will be the standard process if there will be any. And the very first one in the list, and also you could say that by definition could be all the following ones is green hydrogen. As stated before, green hydrogen is any type of source that is environmentally friendly or that is renewable, that will be sustainable. So it's kind of hard to say which type of processes they are. So I would say rather that there are a lot of processes that could be green hydrogen or green technologies, but not all green technologies will always be so friendly with the environment. But it's kind of hard to say which processes are overall good for the environment and which processes are overall bad for the environment. So in my personal opinion, I think it's green hydrogen concept is very vague in the sense that you can have a renewable source but if that renewable source is not sustainable well is it green is it not well that's up to the labeling guys some examples of green hydrogen will be hydrogen produced from electrolysis but more importantly we are not paying extra attention in electrolysis because you could be producing the electricity from fossil fuels so that will not be technically green so that's why i'm telling you it's kind of hard but if that electricity comes from a renewable source like wind, solar, or maybe you're talking about nuclear or so, that may be considered green. So yeah, there are many ways in which you can convert a existing process uh, of hydrogen into green hydrogen. Let's talk about yellow hydrogen, which is pretty straightforward. If you need to imagine any yellow source, well, probably you could say gold, but no. Think that it's pretty straightforward. We're talking about the sun. So whatever type of hydrogen process that obtains the energy or the fuel from the solar energy, such as photovoltaic processes, or maybe you're talking about uh, gathering the energy of the sun and then evaporating the vapor, and then you have your source of energy. Well, whatever type of source you have, but if it comes from the sun or solar, then you have your yellow hydrogen. Red hydrogen, as you can imagine, red sounds kind of dangerous and I typically associate the color with any kind of hydrogen that is produced via any electricity or any fuel source that comes from nuclear energy. The process is called catalytic water splitting or simply catalytic splitting, which is going to be separating catalytically the hydrogen and the oxygen. It sounds great, right? You have hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, and you're not using any fossil fuel, but we know that nuclear energy nowadays may not be quite great to discuss or maybe to uh, present. So that's why it's kind of a issue in between. The process exists itself, but we know that there is a lot of things to do with nuclear energy. Purple hydrogen is pretty similar to red hydrogen in the sense that we are still working with nuclear sources, but in this specific case, we are going to be working more towards the chemo splitting of water rather than the catalytic splitting of water. So essentially, the energy comes from the same, is high temperatures from the nuclear source, and we're going to be obtaining hydrogen gas and oxygen gas from water. And still talking on nuclear power, nuclear energy, we have pink hydrogen. Yes, I know pink sounds kind of inoffensive or very friendly, but this is not the case. It is still using nuclear energy, but that nuclear energy is going to be converted into electricity. And once that you have that electricity, you will be using it to the electrolysis of water. And we know that the electrolysis of water is the separation of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The main source or the main fuel will be directly the electricity that was produced from the nuclear power plant. So when we're talking about nuclear sources, just keep in mind that reddish colors such as red, purple, and pink are based on nuclear energy. And finally, guys, I didn't find that many color codes. Some said that it was green color. Some others said that it was white color. I also saw that they use red color labeling, but I'm talking about biomass or most technically speaking, hydrogen produced from biomass. So although we know that biomass produces CO2 after the combustion, we know that that biomass in the beginning absorbed CO2. So it's kind of in between in the sense that 
uh, it could be assumed to be carbon neutral but technically speaking we know that the crops require a lot of energy so still you couldn't say that it's carbon neutral because you're taking more energy to harvest those crops to gather them to recollect them to prepare them to grow them and much more so i wouldn't say that this is exactly a green hydrogen source mm, it couldn't be white source because stated before it is human made so i don't know i don't like to say the red color because i already told you that reddish colors are for nuclear so it's kind of in between fortunately there is no consensus right now so yeah it's still free on whatever type of source you want to call it and that's it guys those were the hydrogen color codes that i wanted to show you i know that many colors may sound kind of funny or so but believe me those are the color codes that are being thrown nowadays so just consider that in the future hydrogen technologies are coming strong so if you're a chemical engineer or maybe a environmental engineer or someone that uses energy for the operation of any process definitely this is something that may concern you it really looks very promising how hydrogen technologies are improving year by year i still remember back in my days as a student it was only like the green hydrogen that you will hear and now you're hearing much more on carbon sequestration utilization storage or using maybe nuclear in order to obtain hydrogen and many other sources that back in the day was not that common and before we go guys i really want to know what do you think about this what are the technologies that may stick which technologies may not stick or if we're talking about the fossil fuel ones which one do you think are going to be substituted rather quick which other technologies do you think are just there for the sake of being the one percent maybe two percent i don't really think there will be a single technology that will surpass all other technologies i really think it's going to be very fractionated on depending on the places or regions you are the markets and the industries that are in the near so please leave your comments let's start the discussion on hydrogen technologies and how they are going to be impacting the engineering world on my behalf that will be it guys, I'll see you in the next video.